After six weeks of exciting and nerve-wracking tasks and challenges, six contestants have been eliminated from the insurance apprentice. With only three contestants remaining, the time has come for the final task of the insurance apprentice. Sipa Mandla, Amukhelang and Memory are about to tackle the task presented by the FSCA. This is the last opportunity for the top three to prove to the judges that one of them has what it takes to be crowned the Insurance Apprentice 2020. It's been a very grueling journey. I think the past weeks are exhausting and I can see it in the other two. We are tired. So last week I didn't expect JP to go out. I thought he would be part of the top three. I was disappointed to see him go. Looking back at last week, I mean the feedback, I've internalized it and also had a thought about how I'm going to make sure that I incorporate all of those comments. I don't know what the judges are looking for. It's anyone's game. This is do or die, so everybody, including myself, are going to be putting our very last energies into this. How was the task last week? Mm -mm. Guys, this is a new week. Can I just <laughs> get in the zone for this new week? This is the finale. Whatever you have left, goes in here. Top three? <laughs> Did you guys <laughs> expect it? Yo, now nah, even when I, I replay, I'm like, I don't know how I did it. To tell you the truth, my focus was just one task at a time. We at the FSCA. What do you think they have in store for us today? I'm trying not to think about the nerves because it's when you start thinking about the nerves where you end up slipping up. I think today is just gathering every little bit of energy that's left and putting it into this final task. I definitely think this is going to be a regulation task. Every day we've had to show up, solve problems. And you know, going into it, you always ask yourself, how will you be able to? But ultimately at the end, you come out, come out swimming. Irrespective of whatever happens, I think I can hold my head high. I've done myself proud. In my mind, I'm thinking, I need to go the extra mile. I'm just focusing everything that's left for this task today. My game plan is to apply all of the learnings that I've learned over the six tasks. It's the seventh and final task of the Insurance Apprentice 2020. Only three of you remain. Today's task is sponsored by the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, the FSCA. And we're very fortunate, yet again, to have Caroline De Silva with us as a guest judge. Congratulations, apprentices, on getting this far. I'm the Deputy Executive of Regulatory Policy at the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, the FSCA. So this is the FSCA tribunal, it's the appeal court. It's where people come, when they have had regulatory action taken against them, either debarred, a large penalty, a license withdrawn. And this is where they appeal their case. So normally what we do is we ask the contestants to pretend they work for the FSCA. What we're going to do today is we're going to treat you as a key individual of a financial institution, an insurer, who is in breach of the regulations. This time we've taken a real issue where we feel that there's still issues in the industry around compliance, especially around overcharging customers or remunerating brokers um, to the extent that it drives conflict of interest. And we're going to issue you with a debarment order, okay, for your non-compliance. Could I ask you to please issue the apprentices with their notices of our intention to debar them? You're in terms of section 1541B, read with 1531A of the Financial Sector Regulation Act 9 of 2017, notified of the intention of the Conduct Authority to issue a debarment order against you for an alleged contravention in the insurance regulations, the policyholder protection rules, and the Phase Act in a material manner. The available information, facts and evidence which inform the FSCA's intended debarment order are as follows. 
The FSCA received a complaint from a customer that Insurance Apprentice PTY Limited have contravened the binder, outsourcing, commission regulations, as well as the policyholder protection rules as set out above. As the key individual of Insurance Apprentice PTY Limited, you're responsible for overseeing the function of advice and intermediary services. During its preliminary investigations, the FSCA assessed the policy schedule attached to the documents provided to you and interrogated the fees disclosed on that form against the requirements of the regulations and rules set out above. And I don't think I need to remind you of the repercussions of debarment here today. I'm hoping to see them really have an, an understanding of um, the interests of the consumer and how these practices give customers lack of confidence in the sector. So this is a stressful environment, we understand it's a stressful environment. The notice of intention to debar you goes around the remuneration structures between the insurer and the intermediary. It is based on a complaint that we've received regarding abuse of remuneration in terms of charges that the broker has charged on top um, of the premium, the commission structuring, and most particularly an outsource fee. Study the debarment order and then come and explain to us why you should not be debarred, either because you haven't done what we've accused you of and you can justify the charges that have been charged, or how you're going to remediate your non-compliance by setting it right into the future. I wish you lots of luck. Thanks, Caroline. There are no more chances after today. It's, it's the end of the competition. We will be dismissing one of you by the end of this task. And we thought perhaps to lend an extra element of reality. Today's loser will also be debarred for 12 months. <laughs> no, not, not really. <laughs> Yeah, you, you won't be debarred, but I, but I think you get, the, you get the, the gravity of the situation. For any insurance practitioner, um, that's career ending. And I would urge you to approach this task with that level of seriousness. I wish you luck. Thank you. You may leave. We've gotten the brief and I think I more or less understand what they're looking for. So essentially this will all then exclude his, ma his portion and this initiation fee, is it um, on the um, insurer side or? It will be interesting to, to be able to defend from an insurance perspective um, the fees that are being charged. What I don't want is you to quote section 2 subsection 3a says the following. I think they were very clear on what they wanted to see, so I need to focus and make sure I cover all the relevant points that they were looking for. My interpretation isn't necessarily the same as someone else's interpretation, so to give the judges what they want will probably be very difficult. What I don't really understand is whether outsource fees can actually be charged to a policyholder. I think the judge today from the FSCA, relative to last week's um, judge, um, I think is nice. I need to see an understanding of how I have broken the law or, or whether I haven't. You know, a lot of these interpretations are of a legal opinion and I don't have a legal background. So what that ultimately translates to is that the individual will still come in place the business with that person because they get the highest. Everything I do today will be my own doing. Um, and I'm not even going to judge you on, you know, the PPR say this, say this therefore I want you to say the general principles are mm -hmm. commensuration, no duplication. It's solely going to be me and when I go on that boardroom I need to represent myself. I think when I was preparing for this task, the one thing that I struggled with was the outsourcing um, regulations. I think if there's a fail, it will be because of a lack of asking questions. I think I'm not quite comfortable with the outsourcing fees and how they work in relation to the binder. There's a bit of a blur because you're doing the administration but you are also legally obliged. It's different today because I'll be standing by myself. 
and I think for the first time in the presentation, I'll be responsible for answering all of the questions. For the record, please state your name. My name is Amohelang Kaladi. You will now have an opportunity to make representations to the board. We are a very small insurance company. And for that fact, we can't invest a lot of working capital in having to purchase our own policy administration system. Hence, we then had to outsource that function. Now, you might be asking yourself why we had to then pay 22%. We want to ensure that we take our customers through a smooth journey. In determining this percentage, we therefore took into consideration the materiality of this function to us. And thus, we deem that to be very commensurate to the risk that it poses to us. And we've thus ensured that this doesn't result in any duplication of payment. So you're saying that you don't do any policy administration internally. You've outsourced your entire policy administration function to this broker, or just the policy administration for that broker's policies? So we've outsourced the policy administration services for that broker. So let me ask you a question. On the binder fees, the binder fees are three and a half percent. Incidental to entering into varying and renewing a policy or even claims administration is administration, which implies that policy administration on its own is less than three and a half percent. So how can you justify commercially a 22 percent fee for something that under the binder would cost less than three and a half? We went to market to try and obtain a quote of how much it would cost us to implement an end-to-end -end policy administration within the business. And that came out close to 200 million. We at the moment, unfortunately, can't invest such high working capital into that. How did you manage to get a license in the first place? <laughs> you don't have a system. Now, from a policyholder protection rule point of view, as an insurer, we need to satisfy ourselves that fees charged by an intermediary and for which we facilitate actually relate to services provided and relate to services other than those for which the services are provided from an intermediary point of view. Now, the initiation fee is in addition to that because we have ascertained with the broker that they are able to determine an insurance need analysis for the policyholder. They are able to provide advice on risk management as well as management of policyholder self-insurance. So the broker fee and the initiation fee are for the same things? No. Advice? So, so the broker fee mm -hmm. is for your traditional intermediary services. Okay, so you understand that that is what commission is for? And that's maybe part of your your first error because commission covers the introduction of the policy, the maintenance of the premiums and the facilitation of the claim. So it covers all of those things. Those are services for which the insurer pays the broker. The broker may charge the client a fee for something that they don't already earn commission on. Advice is currently covered by commission. Just in terms of the remedial action that you propose taking so that you could keep a closer eye on what the brokers were doing, it, it strikes me that you're going to struggle to do that if you don't have a proper system in place. We are starting to implement enterprise risk management within the firm to ensure that we do mitigate some of these risks and as well as having a compliance function to ensure that we comply with the regulation that we then have in place. So a question as well around this outsourcing rationale. These were notified to the FSB? We do have multiple outsourcing arrangements and in line with the directive, we've then also notified uh, the, the, the FSCA. The licenses are dual licenses now. It's not just Prudential that matters, it's your governance arrangements, your operational ability, your business case, your business rationale, all of those go to a license. And to have an inefficient arrangement, we have to pay for 22.5% for, for administration only, does not sound commercially viable. The binder fee caps were set at a maximum of 9%, including administration. I, yeah, um, Nadia, do you have anything you'd like to add? You're telling us ultimately that the only thing that you've done is to possibly charge commission on the broker fee and the initiation fee. We will ultimately once start consolidating all of our outsource arrangements because we do see to the fact that this potentially creates a conflict. But we've also presented a sustainability plan. We then also, with regards to the initiation fee, have implemented or are going to implement remedial actions with our brokers 
And then lastly, making sure that we apply our commission rates in the appropriate manner and on the right premium. I think uh, we're out of time. Um, I just wanted you to go back to your board perhaps with one final thought. And that is when you hit critical mass and you start reducing these fees because you have your own system, good luck in retaining the business that you've built up to that point. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. I think my presentation was a mixed bag of results. The judges did hammer on quite a number of points. But I think throughout the whole presentation, I stuck to my guns. However, I was open to, to remediation. And I think that's important even in, in, in life. For the record, please state your name. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just your name, please. Oh. My name is Sipamanda Dube. You may make your representations. We at uh, Insurance Apprentice Brokers are for our clients. We've got multiple insurance um, agency agreements with, 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 a, with, with a couple of insurers. I'd like just to take you to um, the reason why uh, uh, we charge an outsource fee of 22%. With all our partners, we stipulate in our insurance uh, um, intermediary, intermediary agreement that we provide a solution to them at 10% to say, we'll do all your IT system related uh, administrations. We provide a risk management program for our, for, for, for our partners at a fee of 6%. We also provide uh, administration services in these uh, IT systems, but we provide also an element of data analysis. And this is included in the rest of the fee, which is um, uh, the rest of the fee, which is six uh, percent, and that will equate to twenty-two percent. Okay. So how do how does you having a great IT system help them? They don't have to uh, outsource the functionality within their organization. Therefore, we take it upon ourselves to do the IT functions. They're outsourcing it to you, though. Correct. So what right. you're saying is they've outsourced acquisition of clients to you, administration to you, and they just do claims, this insurance company? They, they, they do claims, yes. But it sounds to me that what you're doing is binding functions for the insurers, the various insurers. Is that correct? The insurer does have access where they actually approve the quotations that we do. So they approve the rates that we charge according to their underwriting guideline and their policy wording. Okay, but the policy is captured on your system? Correct. Okay, so you're arguing that you're not doing any binding functions? Yes. You're only doing outsourced because you're only doing policy admin. Is that what you're saying? Policy admin on, on our system. The industry combined sat down with the FSCA and agreed the binder caps for outsourcing of these functions to brokers. The 9% includes policy administration. And you're saying, we're not doing any of these functions, we're just doing the administration, and it's 10%. How is that not a simply a means of structuring it so it doesn't look like a binder, it only looks like policy admin so I don't have to be capped? Um, I take your point, ma'am. We will definitely uh, be, be formulating a response on that and sending it to the FSCA. So let's get on to the risk management. Who are you doing the risk management for? So the risk management, we're doing it, uh, it, it it's a service that's provided to uh, the insurer to utilize. And all our, our partners have agreed and they've signed up for it. That's why we've added it into the outsource fee. We are at fault in the fact that we've blanket, we, we've put our clients on a blanket basis and we're going to be looking into it. Yeah, you might have to get one of your colleagues who still have a license uh, to do that. I would like to uh, just, just explain uh, the, the, initi the initiation fee because okay. um, you've included it on the, on, the, on the fees that are included in the policy schedule of the client. Unfortunately, we failed the client in that way. And we are going to be reimbursing the client um, since inception 
all the policy initiation fees. So the fact that you will be remediating by reimbursing the customers the overcharging will act in mitigation against any action we take, but it doesn't condone you from having breached the legislation. I want to go back to this outsource fee business. So the function you're performing really is just the issuing of this policy, for which is the cost of the paper, 50 Rand. So it's not about your earnings, because this is a function you're doing for the insurer. Correct. Correct. It's about their costings. You're charging 2,600 Rand to produce this policy schedule. And I'm assuming it's, it's delivered by hand, or, or perhaps by a falcon. I take your point, sir. Spamandla, uh, you're, you're pretty much out of time. Can I ask you to wrap it up? We are in correspondence regularly with the FSCA. We, 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 we want to speak to them and we want to fix our business according to regulation. Thank you Thank very you. much for your time. So coming out of the boardroom, I was very emotional. Today I feel the judges were definitely bringing it on in terms of the questions. They were extra uh, 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 technical. All I can be sure is that I myself have done my best and I've produced what I can and hopefully that is enough to, to make me the winner. Please state your name for the record. My name is Memory Zimba. You may make your representations. Due to the seriousness of um, the allegations, I wanted this to be an engaging session where I can learn from any errors that we might have committed. If we are loading um, the premiums excessively, it means we are further exacerbating um, the situation. It also means that the customer, the fact that they laid a complaint, might not have been treated fairly. Um, and it's indicative of the fact that the advice that we gave to the client was not clear and the customer did then not make an informed decision. Are you admitting that, that these, these things have happened? I am not admitting to all of them, but I do feel that we have had some shortcomings in terms of some of the allegations. So critically, when we're charging any fees, we need to ensure that there's no conflict of interest. So in terms of the initial fee that has been uh, highlighted in the policy schedule, that fee we receive from the policy holder, as well as the broker fees we receive from the policy holder. The outsourcing and commission is then paid to us by the insurer. We did not have a binder, a binder fee in the policy schedule, which I think, given what's going on with the outsourcing agreements in the industry, um, that is where we might have erred in relation to having some things in the outsourcing fee that actually should have been in the binder, in the binder fees. You have a binder agreement with uh, company XYZ. We do not. We only have an outsourcing oh, agreement. Okay. Anything that has to go, go into entering into renewing or varying of a policy is part of a binder function. Claim settlement is also part of uh, the um, binder um, functions. And that You're doing all of those things in your brokerage? The IT system that we work on, the insurer does not have access to it, means that we are probably doing some of those functions. So we are doing premium collections and claims processing as well as the policy, the overall policy maintenance. Over and above the binder? Yes. You say the insurer has outsourced IT to you, but you're working on a system that doesn't integrate with the insurer, so it hasn't. And that is what some of our remedial actions... So there's really no justification for any outsourcing fee over and above what should be contained in the binder. Why do you think in the first place you don't have a binder agreement, you only have an outsource agreement at 22%. I think that was a short for it, so it was a misunderstanding of the outsourcing fees. And as the key individual, I will have to take responsibility for that. Are you going to tell me in all clean conscience that the reason you chose an outsource and not a binder is not because the outsource fees are not capped? I think initially when the business decision was made, it might have been a consideration, but I think the intent was not necessarily to um, go against the binder regulations and the binder caps. Um, I would think we need to refund the client because they have been prejudiced and we have not followed the regulations. Okay. Is, is this the only client um, that you feel has been prejudiced or is this your entire portfolio of business? We've started an investigation to 
um, take all the policies that, are, that might have been impacted since the introduction of an outsourcing fee to ensure that remedial action is not only for this particular policy, but across the board. So the, the, the thing that bothers me about the fee for, for policy administration, it, it's a percentage, right? Correct. But the cost of producing a single policy should be the same. What I don't get is, is how that, that, that monetary amount fluctuates. You don't get more paper because your car is worth twice as much. I do concede that that is an error that needs to be fixed. So you're basically admitting that you have breached the regulations here. Given that that's the case, what are you proposing you're going to do to, to make this right? The investigation is definitely underway. Um, however, the time did not allow us to make sure that we have ticked all our boxes. That's why I thought this would be an interactive uh, process where we understand exactly where we have gone wrong. How is it possible that you only realised that this overcharging was happening when a complaint was laid with us here at the FSCA? So, I do admit that there was a shortfall in terms of our processes. These are processes that should be clearly monitored and we should not be waiting for the complaint to come in. I'm sorry, we're out of time. Thanks for your representations. Thank you. I think I'm most worried about not having covered all the points that were required. There was information given to us and I'm a little bit worried that I didn't ask the right questions um, to be able to deliver on, on what they want us to deliver on. Caroline, did you, did you have somebody that you thought really knocked it out of the park today? So, one stood out for me. It seemed to me that took one look at what was happening here and knew it was completely shady and knew that this, this is not defensible. In terms of the competition, I think it's still anyone's game and I haven't seen what the, what the other contestants have presented. It's still fighting ground until the judges say you are dismissed. This person, for example, you know that old saying is that those who break the law the best are those who know the law the best. <laughs> <laughs> so I understood the law and was able to like really argue the, the, the devil's advocate position. Um, but I, I don't think that was what we wanted. Um, so, so that's what stood out for me today. If our presentations were all excellent and the judges don't know who to send home, I have prepared motivation for why I think I need to stay in the competition and ultimately go on to win. Um, do you think anyone missed the mark completely, Nadia? Here I was, I was concerned with the persistence and tenacity. <laughs> I'm really, we're going to continue to defraud. Yeah. Oh, oh. Because we've been because doing we it this way for yeah, so long. Yeah, yeah. It's a very poor defence, is that I need to make money and even if it's hurting somebody else, mm. you need to understand that I need to hurt them in order to continue to make this much money is mm. indefensible to me. It's out of my hands, there's nothing more I can do, the judges must deliberate. I feel both nervous and relieved at the same time. It's been a long seven weeks. So what I was really looking for is did they understand the legislation, were they able to apply it, and did they understand the big picture, the ethics, the conduct issues, mm. the impact on the industry, and one was very strong in that yeah. regard. I think I've done my best. The next person to tell me memory, step forward. <laughs> they must do that at their own risk. We can only take two people into the final. Are we in agreement that we have our our person to send home today? Yes, we are. Yes, I mean, based on today's task alone, I know who my winner is and I know who the loser is and, and yeah. I would have to support that. Okay. Let's bring him in. thank the FSCA and, and Caroline once again for a superb, very challenging task. Uh, I'll let her give her feedback and we'll chat soon. Let me start by saying, if that had been a real life environment with those real challenges and non-compliance issues, 
and the reasons that you gave me for those non-compliances um, were real, all of you would have been debarred. And that's a tough thing to say, but I think what's important is it was a simulated environment. But what came through very clearly is it was almost like a microcosm of some of the issues that we're seeing in the industry. We have anecdotal feedback complaints, we have supervision, we have on-sites. And, and three things struck out for me that for me reflect what I think is happening in the industry. First is that I believe that there are practices where um, insurers and brokers are switching from binder agreements to outsource agreements, not for real commercial reasons, not for real outsourcing purposes, but simply to earn higher fees because the outsource agreements are not capped. And we will be looking into that. The second thing is that we are of the opinion that there may also be a lack of oversight by insurers of the fees that brokers charge their customers. And um, I think that came through very clearly in all of your presentations. The third thing for me, which was very important, which didn't come through in all of your presentations, but which is very important, is that we're shifting from a compliance-driven environment to a conduct-driven environment. It's not about ticking the box and saying, I complied with the rules. It's about ethical conduct around treating customers fairly. And that came through today, not for everyone, but it came through. And those are very three important factors that I was looking at when I was judging your presentations. Thanks, Caroline. Nadia? Firstly, I just want to just acknowledge that you guys have really had a really, really tough run and that all three of you have really done an amazing job to be here today. I do think that in terms of today's task, um, we were looking for um, a level of technical application that we didn't see um, at the levels that we wanted in terms of you know how to interpret um, and, and engage with the information. But I think more than that, what was really disappointing was a lack of just the fairness to customers. Um, being able to defend a position on the back of compliance doesn't mean that we should. So, two of you did an okay job today. One of you missed the mark by a mile. Memory, could you step forward, please? Since the beginning of this competition, what I've observed is that you've been in a couple of group sessions. There's been this kind of impression from your colleagues that you've been unable or unwilling to work in a team. We had one incident where you directly attacked one of your colleagues. You've upset a lot of people along the way. And I have to say, I just don't know how you've done it up to now. But today you had the highest score. Spamandla. I'm afraid this is the end of the road for you. You're dismissed. Thank you. Obviously, I feel sad that I'm leaving, but what a journey, what an experience. There are some things I could have done better along the way, but um, in saying that, I'm definitely excited to see what's next. At the end of the day, um, I did make it to the final three, and I'm happy I did that. I'm proud of myself, and good luck to the top two. So it's down to the two of you. Amor, you did a good presentation today. I think what was lacking and what pushed memory ahead of you is she made her presentation a lot more consumer-centric, which is really what the spirit of the legislation is. Uh, you know, focusing on profits and maximizing the business of the insured or your business. That's not really what the FSCA is looking at here. And, and I think that was an important Thing that you let slip by. But it's down to the two of you. And I've got to tell you, if we really look back at this competition, I mean, we had memory, you had immunity on the Marsh Day, which was probably one of the toughest tasks. You were successful in that. Amor, you've been in the top 
of a couple of the tasks during the week. In our deliberation, and we still need to sit down and look at the final scores, but it's, it's really not clear. I mean, we are going into this finale without knowing who's actually going to take that top spot. It's anybody's game right now. But what I do want to say is well done to both of you. I know it hasn't been an easy road, but you've made it. You're in the top two. The Insurance Apprentice title is within your grasp, either of you. So with that, you can congratulate each other. Well done. And we'll see you at the finale in a couple of weeks. Thank you. You may leave. It was quite tough with just three. It must have been really hard in terms of the entire journey. How's it been? Yeah, well, we started with, with nine. Nine, yeah. Sure. You started with how many in the beginning? How many applications altogether? 140-odd wow. applications. Um, so we, we really thought we had the best of the best in yeah. the room, and I, and I actually think we did. Mm. I mean, the tasks yeah, were tough yeah. this year. Yeah. There was a lot of deep thinking that was required, a lot of strategy, a knowledge of a broad range of interests really is what somebody needed to have to pull it off. Mm. Well, guys, yeah, that's season six in the bag. Thank you. Hello, my brother. Thank you. you. Can you get a big hug? <laughs> and a huge lift, because you deserve it. Well done. And uh, see you in the finale.